Hi, my name is Mimi Sato Ray, and I'm a family practice physician um, in El Dorado Hills, and, um, and I do uh, traditional family practice and functional medicine as well. People differ in how they define it. Stress is whatever you perceive is stress. Everyone has a different perception of stress, and it is actually determined when you're a fetus in the womb as what your perception of stress is and your reaction to stress. Anything that your you perceive as a threat or whether it's real or not real, stress is a reaction. There are three reactions that are biologically, um, that biologically occur. One is startle, one is stress, one is trauma. Those are the three responses that the body makes to anything in the world. And so your brain in your hypothalamus determines, helps you determine, is this something that I need to run away from? Or am I okay to stay here? Or is this a good thing? So anxiety is the emotion that people often feel when they experience stress. Um, it's, it's a sensation that you feel. Stress isn't necessarily a sensation. It's the outward um, force or um, experience that's coming in. And anxiety is what you feel on the inside in the response to stress. And anxiety can be felt in many different ways. People will describe it as butterflies in their stomach. They can have anxiety as they can't sleep. They can have anxiety where their heart rate is going very fast and they just feel like they're very activated. Um, you can have headaches. People will make a lot of different responses to anxiety or how anxiety is felt in their body. It's individualized and can be very different. I would say, yes, there's the difference between good and bad stress. It really depends how it motivates you um, or if it triggers you in a negative way. So good stress, say there's some goal that you're trying to achieve and your body will allow you to produce hormones and uh, make the responses to respond to the good stress so that you can achieve your goal. However, if that stress goes on for too long or is too intense and triggers you, it can be considered bad stress, which can cause alterations in your general physiology and your cellular phys physiology to the point where there's negative impact and usually resulting in some kind of disease or symptoms. So acute stress is something that happens quickly. Usually it doesn't, uh, the event comes and it's over, um, like a conflict that you might have with somebody um, or an illness, um, a short illness, like a cold. Um, it can be something just that's not extended. Chronic stress would be over weeks, months, even years and that can have a lot of negative effects on your body and many other negative impacts on your health. So long-term stress can cause many different things. Over time, it can cause, well, that it does cause inflammation in many different organ systems of your body. A new term that is arising is something called inflammaging. So that inflammation is leading to premature aging. That's a tough question because it is your stress response that we're trying to reduce. So medications can come over the top and suppress your anxiety that you're feeling, whether it's a increased heart rate or just feeling anxious or headaches, or backaches, you can give medication to relieve some of those symptoms, but there's no real 
prescription medication for stress. So you can't actually decrease your stress level because oftentimes stress is not um, something that you control. So the only thing that you can control is how you respond to stress. So when you have some kind of stressor come to you, it actually is beneficial for you to complete your stress response. Um, and how you do that is your stress response, remember, is generating adrenaline and cortisol. And so if you have some kind of stressor, you need to discharge that adrenaline and perhaps try to reduce your cortisol by calming, doing calming things, calming activities and taking calming herbs or adaptogens. So trying to discharge that adrenaline, uh, when it comes, you can do some kind of activity and whether it doesn't mean that you, okay, I'm, I have to go exercise. You could, or you could just dance around for a little while, or you could do a couple kicks or a couple punches or just something to get your body moving to help you discharge your adrenaline for that short period of time so you don't store it and keep it for the rest of the day or for weeks or months. 